2007 was an odd year for WWE with some calling it one of the company's worst years in history in terms of creativity and match quality. I don't necessarily agree with that statement but just google WWE 2007 and you'll see a lot of people don't have much love for the year. A big storyline got axed in 07, one that had the potential to be forever remembered and that storyline featured the death of Vince McMahon. Absolute prime pro wrestling nonsense for sure and something that would definitely make a lot of fans roll their eyes. The storyline would be a classic whodunit mystery that was reportedly gonna go on for months. It's one of those storylines that sounds so silly that it actually becomes intriguing. The chairman of the company faking his own death. It's preposterous in the most WWE way possible but just having the sheer gall to pull something like this off makes it very interesting. And the lengths the WWE went through to keep the storyline going deserves recognition too. As ridiculous as it was, it was on track to be one of, if not the biggest storyline of the year and it could have been the storyline that everyone remembered from 2007. But it all stopped before it truly began. This is the story of Mr McMahon's death on WWE television. Our story begins at WrestleMania 23, April 1st, 2007. The main event of the show had to get changed due to Triple H getting injured, one of the many problems that the WWE had to deal with in 2007. Another problem Vince McMahon had around this time period was none other than this guy right here. If Bobby Lashley defeated Umaga at WrestleMania, then Donald would have the pleasure of shaving Vince McMahon's head on pay per view. Umaga lost, Vince got his head shaved, and this gave us Fedora Vince McMahon, backwards baseball cap Vince McMahon, and eventually do rag Vince McMahon. That's right, McMahon began rocking a do rag. What does this have to do with the death of Vince McMahon? Well, the connection is minimal, but when else am I going to get a chance to talk about Vince McMahon wearing a do rag? Peace out, my brothers! Durag Vince wanted to get a little revenge on Bobby Lashley, so he, Umaga and Shane McMahon took on Lashley in a 3 on 1 handicap match at Backlash with Lashley's ECW title on the line. McMahon pinned Bobby and so Vince McMahon became the new ECW champion. If you thought Durag Vince McMahon was unbelievable then wrap your head around McMahon becoming the top dog of a brand that once prided itself on everything extreme. Again, you're probably wondering what does Vince McMahon winning the ECW championship have to do with his televised death? Vince wasn't going to hold that belt forever of course, he had to drop it eventually and it took just over a month before McMahon would lose the championship back to Lashley at the one night stand pay per view. It was losing the championship belt that made Vince go a little… Uh, a little weird I guess would be the best way to put it. Something you're going to have to keep in mind here is that many seeds were planted for future storyline developments. From Vince losing the title right up until his quote death, there were a few strange moments and promos that would have surely got explained once the mystery was solved. However, because of the abrupt end of the storyline, we'll never know the true answers. Let's check out what happened then on TV and see how Vince McMahon went from wearing lilac suits with matching headwear to exploding in his limousine. As mentioned earlier, Vince lost the ECW championship at one night stand and then on the following episode of Raw, Vince began acting very strangely. John Cena, who just defeated the great Khali Lee at the pay per view, kicked off the Raw show and John promoted the upcoming WWE draft. The draft was going to take place the following week on Raw. McMahon interrupted Cena, gone was the signature Vince McMahon strut, gone was the confidence McMahon had while he held the ECW championship. Vince looked completely defeated. Not only did Vince look physically hurt but he looked mentally hurt too. It's not how fans were used to seeing the chairman of WWE. The fans chant you suck as Vince seems to struggle with his words, he can't speak and when he does speak his paranoia instantly shows. Vince says he knows why Cena's out here tonight, he's here to embarrass McMahon because he no longer has a championship belt while Cena does. McMahon's delivery is a mixture of sadness, anger and a little bit of confusion. That's why you're here. Vince closes his eyes while the fans chant asshole. He says Cena's out here to rub his nose in the dirt, but Vince isn't gonna bend and Vince damn sure isn't gonna break. Cena clearly thinks that McMahon is already broken. Vince then tries to say his name. Is Vincent Kennedy 
Cena turning his back on McMahon seems to stop the chairman in his tracks. Cena then says he's gonna believe his boss is just tired, he's upset and he's emotional after losing his championship and maybe he's even a little delusional. Vince tries to say his name again and Vincent Kennedy Cena loses patience. John says he knows Vince had a rough night but McMahon needs to suck it up. Vince is bobbling like he lost his mind and when Cena says this, there's a smile on McMahon's face. Vince called Cena a liar, McMahon still has his empire and his dignity, the only thing he lost was his world title and the same thing's gonna happen to Cena tonight on Raw. While still acting like he's lost his mind, McMahon tells Cena that he's in a triple threat match tonight, he's gonna face the great Kali and Umaga and Vince then leaves the ring while pulling a wide range of different facial expressions. Jim Ross says there's something very, very wrong with the boss. Again, people would have rolled their eyes at this, but this kind of stuff works well for Vince. In real life, he comes across as a little unpredictable, the evil genius. He's out there for lack of a better term. Back then, you'd never know what to expect from Vince McMahon and I always found his Mr. McMahon character a whole lot of fun to watch. McMahon could be very entertaining without trying too much and a certain amount of that comes down to his willingness to do things like this. McMahon's night wasn't over yet though, oh no. McMahon bumped into IC champion Santino Marella backstage, he gave him an awkward thumbs up before snapping at Maria. <laughs> Jealous because Santino still has a championship belt, Vince orders Marella to get in the ring and defend his title while slapping him across the face and it was clear at this point that McMahon had indeed lost his mind and he needed to get himself home and take a few weeks off. Get. Get. Vince bumped into the Hardy Boys and more erratic behaviour took place. Matt and Jeff were the tag team champions and once again McMahon put some title belts on the line when he ordered the Hardys to face Lance Cade and Trevor Murdoch. How you boys and that? You boys good? Vince looked like he was having a good old sniff at Jeff Hardy at one point too. The Hardy Boys didn't know where to look nor what to say. Immediately afterwards, McMahon bumped into nature boy Ric Flair and Tori Wilson and after another awkward exchange, Vince booked Tori into a match with Carlito and then McMahon and Flair had an interesting conversation where Vince said all he hears everywhere he goes is the signature Ric Flair woo from fans and McMahon puts Flair over as a legend. Flair thanked McMahon but then Vince said a legend should take on a legend killer tonight on Raw. That match took place after this meeting and Flair got completely destroyed by Randy Orton. As for Tori, she got pinned after taking the backstabber from Carlito and the Hardy Boys lost their tag team championships to Murdoch and Cade. McMahon's then seen in his office with the coach and Vince says he can't shake it and it's coming. Vince says it's stuck in his throat, he can't get it up, he's got that ominous feeling, that black cloud is rolling in and Vince can't get rid of it. Vince says he doesn't know what it is but next week he's gonna feel so much better. Not only will the draft take place, Place, something else is gonna happen that's gonna cheer Vince right up. The coach goes out to the arena and he announces next week's special 3 hour draft episode of Raw will also be Vince McMahon appreciation night. So the 11th of June episode of Raw, the WWE draft and Vince McMahon appreciation night. The show kicks off with Vince McMahon uncharacteristically reading from a script. He says many believe he lost his way since Lashley defeated him at one night stand but Mr McMahon assures us he's fine, he sure doesn't look it though. McMahon says tonight will be the defining moment of his life and the promo ends with Vince giving an empty, creepy look at the camera. Throughout the evening, videos were played that highlighted Vince's career both in and out of the ring. That part went well. What didn't go so well were the video tributes that got sent into WWE from wrestlers and celebrities who were supposed to put Vince over and talk about how great he is. Jesse Ventura ripped McMahon to shreds, Snoop Dogg called Vince McMahon the world's greatest asshole, Steve-O wrote a poem for Vince that was actually quite complimentary. I don't think Steve-O got the memo though. 
DT talked about WrestleMania and how Bobby Lashley defeated Umaga, leading to Vince wearing a do-rag, so that really wasn't the sick burn Donald thought it was, in my opinion. Jimmy Snuka wonders why Vince McMahon has seemingly lost his mind and Cheeky Baby told Snuka, in the most cheeky way possible, that it's all because he lost his hair at WrestleMania. Bret Hart, making his first Raw appearance in a very long time, said he'd love to show appreciation for Vince McMahon with his fists, while also calling him an asshole. The great Bobby Heenan said McMahon has given a lot of people work, while also saying he put a lot of people out of work. He also makes unsavory comments about McMahon's entrance walk. Mean Gene Okerlund mentioned the promoters that Vince McMahon put out of business, and Steve Austin didn't have a single nice thing to say about the chairman, instead deciding to remind Vince about all those times the rattlesnake terrorized him. Mick Foley also came out of the arena and he talked about how Vince McMahon didn't appreciate the fans, so there's no reason for the fans to appreciate at him. Clearly, this night wasn't going the way Vince McMahon had hoped. The show was going to end with a Vince McMahon promo, and clearly, after everything that aired on TV, McMahon wasn't feeling any better. As he walked to the ring, Jim Ross said that Vince actually looks medicated. McMahon stands in the ring with a look on his face that's very hard to describe. His hand begins trembling as he holds the microphone. He manages to get the words, thank you, out of his mouth before dropping the mic, and he makes his way back up the ramp, still looking completely out of it. Vince goes backstage where a ton of wrestlers are lined up along the corridors. Everyone's got a concerned or confused look on their face, unless you're Paul London who smiles from ear to ear. Vince walks along the corridor. He's then stopped by the coach who tells Vince that his limousine's waiting in the opposite direction. Vince then walks down the hall where he stops in front of Pat Patterson and Jerry Briscoe, and then he steps out of the building. Vince walks slowly towards his limousine, stopping twice to notice a few guys hanging outside the arena. Seems a bit odd that McMahon would take notice of these two while acting oblivious to the rest of his roster. Vince then approaches his limousine. He looks back at the arena before getting inside. He puts his foot outside the limo after getting in, and when the door closes, McMahon's limousine gets blown up and Raw fades to black. A few things to note that may mean nothing. Vince hesitated slightly before getting into the limousine, and his facial expression completely changed as he looked back at the arena. Read into that what you will. While researching this story online, I was truly amazed at how many websites and articles completely leave out the following episode of SmackDown and the next episode of Raw. Many skip over these shows entirely and move straight to the cancellation, while completely ignoring the storyline progressions that took place on these shows. SmackDown opened up with a warning saying that parental discretion was advised. We go to the arena and the superstars of SmackDown stand at the entranceway while McMahon gets a 10 bell salute. Fans in attendance laugh and boo, and JBL says this audience is an embarrassment to pro wrestling. The fans clearly thought this angle was an embarrassment. Edward Kaufman, executive vice president and general counsel for WWE, gives a press conference where he says the show will go on, as will the whole WWE, information that came straight from the McMahon family. And we also saw video footage of a federal agent announcing that an investigation is ongoing. Throughout the night, superstars such as William Regal, Edge, Chavo Guerrero and others gave tributes to Vince McMahon while talking about how much he meant to them personally and professionally. It was really something else. The next episode of Raw gave us a lot of clues about where the storyline was gonna go and who would potentially be involved. The WWE were leading fans to assume that Vince had really passed away, they went all out, and it even had an effect on WWE's stock prices with a 1.8% drop after the angle aired. Media outlets rushed to confirm that this was all a big hoax by contacting emergency services in the area, getting in touch with the external pyro specialists who set up the stunt, contacting WWE headquarters directly. One outlet even reached out to the FBI after the WWE aired that video on SmackDown. Many thought it was real or they just wanted to be the ones to confirm it wasn't real. The story did create a significant amount of buzz outside of world wrestling entertainment. Good, bad or indifferent, it didn't really matter. This is the kind of stuff the WWE loved and they still love. Anyway, back to the following week's Raw and it opens up with an apology from Mick Foley. Randy Orton comes out and he says Foley had all the motivation in the world to rig up that limousine. And there we have it, the finger pointing and blaming immediately begins on the red brand. 
Booker T, Bobby Lashley and John Cena come out to add to the mystery. Cena talks about how many enemies Vince McMahon had and how practically anyone remotely associated with Vince could be the culprit. It's confirmed that the federal investigator is in the building and he's going to be interviewing folks throughout the night. Crime Time are on the scene to sell us some Vince McMahon memorabilia, including Vince McMahon's Last Supper. I mean, come on, imagine being a news reporter and contacting the FBI after seeing this. The Iron Sheik tried to capitalize by getting his own talk show on WWE Raw, and then we got an interview with the limousine driver, and I'm sorry, that wig. Look at the fucking hairpiece our guy's rocking here. He should have been wearing a do-rag. Peace out, my brothers! With how the WWE were making this the most important storyline they have presented in quite some time, you'd think they'd bring in a better actor. This guy is absolutely awful. Still, he says he and his wife have been having problems. She phoned him on the night of the incident, and he left the limousine to take the call. He says it could have been he that got blown up into tiny pieces, and thank God it wasn't, mate. While the investigator interviewed other superstars throughout the night, two other promos took place that are very noteworthy. The first featured Mr. Kennedy, and Kennedy praised Vince as a great man, a great friend, and he ripped into the fans for showing disrespect to the chairman. Kennedy said in his promo that Vince was like a father to him, and Ken dedicated his career to the legacy of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Raw would end with Stephanie McMahon making an appearance. Stephanie got in the ring and she invited fans to tune into Raw next week. Every superstar from Raw, SmackDown and ECW would be in attendance to celebrate the life of Mr. McMahon. Stephanie said that the upcoming pay-per-view later in the week may be named Vengeance, but the McMahon family are seeking vengeance over the death of Mr. McMahon. At the Vengeance pay-per-view, the explosion was replayed and an article from WWE.com was shown, furthering the mystery while asking fans for their opinion. Detective Columbo here gave an update where he said the DNA of the limo driver Vince McMahon and another well-known personality was found on the limousine. Michael Cole said there's a possibility that details will get revealed the following night on Raw during Mr. McMahon's memorial service. The last thing that needs mentioned here is that Chris Benoit did not appear for his match for the vacant ECW title. Benoit vs CM Punk was supposed to be the third match on the card, and Benoit was replaced by Johnny Nitro. The storyline would abruptly come to an end when fans tuned into the 3 hour episode of Raw and the first thing they saw was this image. We went inside an empty arena where Vince McMahon stood in the ring and McMahon announced that Raw had been cancelled. Vince says tonight's storyline was centered around the alleged demise of his character, Mr. McMahon, but in reality, Chris Benoit, his wife Nancy and their son Daniel are dead. McMahon says they were only found that day, the authorities are undergoing an investigation, and the company offered condolences to the extended family of Benoit. Without knowing details of what happened, the WWE then decided to dedicate the full 3 hour broadcast to Chris Benoit. Superstars talked about Benoit in a manner not too dissimilar to what we saw on Smackdown the week prior, only this time it was a lot, lot more serious. When more information came to light about what happened the following day, McMahon opened up the ECW show by confirming the company didn't know the horrendous details about what happened at the Benoit household. Vince said there'd be no further mentions of Benoit, and the show was dedicated to those affected by the tragedy. So, the McMahon death angle was dropped and the WWE would move on. Vince returned to TV two months later, he let a replay of the explosion run on the Titantron, and he explained that he staged the limousine explosion to see if fans still cared. McMahon said he's a sensitive guy who needs some positive reinforcement every now and then, and by staging his own demise, McMahon got exactly what he wanted. The outpouring of support and sympathy was overwhelming, and Vince said it was nice to know the fans loved him. And that was that, move on, forget about it, on with the show. Makes you wonder what was supposed to really happen with the storyline, right? What were the original plans? Who set up the limousine? 
Well, there's been a few answers given to that question and guys, you gotta remember, with things like this, it's all hearsay and quite possibly guesswork. The WWE are fond of changing plans in the middle of storylines. At one point, they'd do quite a lot to throw people off and still, up to this day, they'll let fake information leak to journalists in hopes of surprising viewers. It doesn't matter where the information comes from or who published it, we'll never truly know what was gonna happen, but let's entertain what's been said online. Take this all with a big grain of salt, I've combined interviews and everything I've found online, and this seems to be the narrative. The DNA found on the limousine, it belonged to Linda McMahon. On the Vince McMahon memorial episode of Raw, the one that got cancelled, Linda McMahon would get arrested at the end of the show as her DNA was found on the limo. Vince's brother Roderick was apparently scheduled to appear on the memorial episode and maybe even beyond that, but it's all unclear. Vince recorded a will, the will reading would air on the Titantron, and McMahon would announce that the WWE Empire was getting put in the hands of his illegitimate son, Ken Kennedy. Kennedy would get pushed as a massive heel and he'd have a feud with Triple H. Triple H was scheduled to make his return at SummerSlam. With Stephanie McMahon by his side, Triple H's feud with Kennedy would go all the way to WrestleMania, apparently, with the WWE Empire going to the winner of the match. Vince would then admit to faking the whole thing and setting up his wife strictly to get her out of the way, all so he could see if his legitimate son or his son-in-law were worthy of taking over the WWE. I must repeat, this is all hearsay and it's all rumours. Krista Joseph, who worked in WWE as a writer at the time, said that there definitely was gonna be a power struggle over the WWE, but beyond that, it was just an evolving process. It sounds like no finish was ever truly set in stone. The illegitimate son part was salvaged though, but Kennedy would not be involved. He got himself in a little trouble and so, instead, the role of Vince McMahon's illegitimate son went to Hornswoggle. That whole angle turned out rather messy in the end, but initially, if you believe the rumours, it was all supposed to play out very differently. Dave Meltzer said that Vince was just going to return in the summer, he was going to say he staged his death, and then he was going to reveal an accomplice who helped him pull it off. Again, Mr. Kennedy's name was brought up as a top candidate. So really, who knows what was going to happen. And that was the story of Vince McMahon's staged death, or Mr. McMahon's staged death. It's one thing to wonder how things would have turned out and throw out theories, but really, the right call was made to cancel it. McMahon has done some insane things in the past and you never put anything past the crazy bastard, but calling the storyline off was the right call. 2007 would just get worse for the WWE from the 25th of June onwards. The company got a lot of media buzz after the Vince angle, but the media attention they got from the Benoit family tragedy was a complete different beast. I'm not going to get into all that now, but it goes without saying that a lot of things changed while the WWE and pro wrestling as a whole was put under some serious scrutiny. But let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know how you would have wrapped up the story. It'll be interesting to read some fantasy booking or theories about how the story could have went. Thanks for watching this one guys, I hope you enjoyed it and take care.